The book we are reading today is called Anzac Girl, The War Diaries of Alice Ross King. Anzac Girl. It was 1914 when Alice, when Sister Alice Ross King left Australia for the war. The crowd held coloured streamers and waved handkerchiefs above their heads. Don't go, her mother told her. I have to, Alice said simply. Nursing was her passion, all she had ever wanted to do. Now her country needed her and she was ready. But Alice wasn't ready. Nobody was. Cairo, Egypt, April 29th, 1915, her diary entry. I shall never forget the shock when we saw the men arrive, covered in blood. Most of them were half their uniforms, shot or torn away. They kept coming in seven at a time. Soon all of our beds were full and new ones were being brought in and put in every available corner. From the Dar Daniels, thousands of wounded poured into Cairo. From Australia came boat after boat of new recruits, keen for action. If this was the war to end all wars, they wanted to be a part of it. Among the soldiers, one stood out. His name was Harry Moffat. Join the brave throng that goes marching along. Cairo, Egypt, November 14th, 1915. Moff came over every evening that he was able to get away from camp. During that time, we had some delightful days. One afternoon, we climbed the pyramid and had tea on top. I shall never forget the glory of the view. The sun was setting and the colouring was wonderful. Alice and Harry snatched time together whenever they could. On New Year's Eve, Alice shivered at the thought of what 1916 might bring. When rumours came that Alice's hospital would be moved to France, there was just enough time to say goodbye. Rouen, France Recollections Harry and I tried to meet before the first Australian General Hospital moved to France. We sat on the balcony at Shepherd's Hotel and talked of our future. There was a wonderful sunset, a beautiful apricot glow. Harry said, when we are married, I'll give you a dress that colour. He caught the 8pm train to the canal and I have not seen him since. In France, battlefields ran like the great snake through the countryside. Alice's hospital was sent to the city of Rouen, well back from the fighting. In July, the British and French armies launched one of the biggest attacks of the war and in a single day, 20,000 wounded passed through Alice's city. And then she heard the news. Harry killed in action. Ferber, 19th of July. Rouen, France, August 14, 1916. I expect I must pick up life again and go on. I do not know how to face a lifeless future though. I cannot really believe the news yet and each day I long for a letter telling me that he is only wounded. One day a letter did not arrive. Alice's heart leaped as she recognised the writing. Harry, dearest heart of mine. It was dated July 14th, five days before Harry had died. Alice slipped the letter between the pages of her diary she would keep it safe. At night, Alice cried for hours into her pillow. As each day broke, she wondered how she would keep going. At the hospital, rows of men lay wounded, burned or bloodied or simply empty like her. Some were boys hardly old enough to shave. Alice kept on. Ruin, France, October 7th, 1916. I bought a watch for my little 18-year-old lad, Jim. He has both legs off and one hand. He was thrilled when I fastened it onto his wrist. We have such a fight to save him. His people kept a cane farm. 
they make walking sticks. A year after Harry's death, Alice was transferred to a casualty clearing station, a medical post near the battlefront. One night, a German plane, Fritz, had been spotted. Armitage, France, July 22, 1917. I went along the duckboards on the way to the tent where Fritz was caught in the searchlight just above us. Batty caught my arm and pointed up, saying, Doesn't it look pretty, sister? Wilson walked on swinging a lantern. Then we heard a whir of dropping of the bombs. Alice took off towards her patients. There seemed to be nobody to help her. As the soldiers fired on the German bomber, shrapnel from the anti-aircraft guns, Archies fell around her like rain. Armitage, France, July 22nd, 1917. I flew through the chest of abdominal wards and called out, Are you all right, boys? Don't bother us about, was the general cry from there. I raced on, and the next thing I knew, I went over into the bomb crater. I shall never forget the awful climb on hands and feet out of the hole. I could hear nothing for the roar of the planes and archies. I seemed to be the only living thing about. Night after night, the bombings continued. The officer in charge, General Birdwood, didn't want women putting their lives at risk and ordered them all to safety of the dugout. Alice hated being pushed aside. Armitage, France, 1917. I'm writing this down the dugout. Full moon and Fritz doing his stuff. We hate leaving the patients, but Birdie says we are all to be withdrawn. If he hears, we are exposed to fire. I knuckle down to the wards to see if the orderlies were there or hiding in a soap drain. A Fritz flew along the duckboards as I was running back, seemed to be right on top of me, trying to get through the searchlights. As the weeks drew on, it began to seem as though the war would never end. A sort of hopelessness settled over Alice. When she had left Melbourne, she had known that her work, what her work would be for. She could see the better world that would be created once the fighting was done. Now, she wasn't so sure. Armitage, France, 1917. The last post is being played nearly all day at the cemetery next door to the hospital. So many deaths. The German prisoners being brought in have buckles with God will us written and the Padre is always praying that the right will prevail. I'm beginning to wonder about it all. Nineteen eighteen grew darker and darker. After months of the casualty clearing station, Alice had been sent back to Rouen. She was safer there, but news from the front only seemed to get worse. It had all been for nothing. Her years of work, Harry's death, after everything that they had been through, was it possible that they were going to lose the war anyway? Rouen, France, 1918. The Germans are breaking through. We can hear the guns getting louder. The 5th Army broke. They had been flooding into Rouen on any trucks. The trains are full and they are riding on top. No picnics in the woods these days. I'm frightened, really. And just like that, it was over. Rouen, France, November 12, 1918. Yesterday was a wonderful day. There has been an armatus. People were dancing in the street. One very drunk Australian soldier came up to me leading a white draw, drought horse he had pinched from a French cheese cart. It had a red collar on it. It said, here you go, sister. I won't want this horse again. I'm not going back to Australia. Australia, it would seem strange to go back after all that had happened. 
Whatever her future held, Alice vowed that she would never forget the past few years. She would live her life to honour those who would never return. Alice did live her life. It was full and happy and blessed with love, but she also never forgot the horror and the heartache of those years at war. When Alice died in 1968, her diaries remained. They were her testimony, a true story of all that she'd lived through, and with them kept her safe for more than 50 years. Alice's children found a letter. 14th of the 7th, 16. Dearest heart of mine, we were right in the thick of it all again. This afternoon we had a severe bombardment, and as you can see, I'm quite fit. All is over now, and I'll have to get away, as I have lots to do. If only I could have one last kiss and one hug, now I would be happy. Ruins are on every hand, and the magnificent growth of poppies and cornflowers make a wonderful contrast to the surrounding scene of desolation. The French, the French are a great improvement of those in Gallipoli, but the work, darling, is long. I seem to be going day and night. I get down for a moment and then I am called up. I love you, long, endearingly love of mine. So think lovingly of me and dream that I am, as you know, I am in your wake, waking moments. Ever your sweetheart, Harry. And that is the end of our story. But we have here got an author's note. Alice writes in her diary that Lieutenant Harry Moffat was killed in Furbay. Historians now call this battle the Battle of Fromils. The night that Harry died was almost 2,000 Australian soldiers were killed and another 3,000 were injured. It remains to this day the bloodiest night in Australian history. Harry is remembered at VC Corner Cemetery in France. One of the 1,299 soldiers whose bodies were never found. Alice met Dr. Sidney Appleford of the, on the troop ship home after the war. They married and together they set up a medical practice in Victoria and had four children, including my grandfather Richard. Alice died in 1968, 12 years before I was born. I am so grateful for her war diaries. Although we never met, I feel like I have come to know her through her words. The diary entries in this book are actual extracts from Alice's diaries. Alice often used abbreviations in her writing, and she sometimes even made spelling mistakes. These have been changed for the purpose of the book. I've also sometimes removed part or all of a sentence if I thought it wasn't necessary, but I have tried to stay as true as possible to Alice's writing. Harry's letter is exactly how it was written to her. The full transcript of Alice's diaries is available on the Australian War Memorials website. Alice was awarded the Military Medal for all of her actions during the bombings of the Casualty, of casualty Clearing Station described in this book. In 1918, she was also made the Associate of the Royal Red Cross. Alice, Alice's war service didn't end with the World War I. During World War II, she was the Assistant Controller for Victoria for the Australian Army Women's Medical Services. For this work, she was awarded the War Medal, 1939 to 1945, and the Australian Service Medal from 1939 to 1945. And in 1949, she was awarded the Florence Nightgown Medal by the International Red Cross. The Australian Department of Defence has described her as the most decor de de decorated woman in Australia. A beautiful true story and one that I hope that you'll remember for years to come. <laughs>